So many of you know that we recently hit 100,000 subscribers back in April, and that's just so mind-blowing to me. I mean, heck, we're at 130,000 now. What the heck? Honestly, none of this would have been possible without all of you. So to thank every single one of you, I'm going to be giving away 500, that's right, 500 pro-grade micro SD card for your Nintendo Switch. So all of you can double your storage and re-download any titles you needed to, I don't know, archive or delete to fit Tears of the Kingdom on your system. All you have to do is click on the link below, which will apply a $40 discount to any Voso One SD card. You can add the 64 or 32 gigabyte card to the card and proceed to checkout to get those ones for free. You can also take that code and use it on any size micro SD card so you can get higher storage sizes for a pretty hefty discount. We will also select 10 people who get the 128, 256, 512 gigabyte card or any other product from the site to get a free Nintendo Switch online subscription and a secret surprise. They have fantastic accessories like this Tears of the Kingdom case or kit for people who couldn't get the special edition and even an 8-bit dough to connect a PlayStation or Xbox controller to your Switch. They also sell multiple do-it-yourself repair kits like this one to repair place any Joy-Con and stop the drift. So if you find anything you like, use my discount code PRIME to get 15% off any order. Also, if we get 2,500 likes on this video, Voso is actually going to add another 300 coupons to this giveaway. <laughs> Guys, that could be 800. Please keep in mind that we want the most people to get an SD card. So shipping is not included, although it's very cheap. And all packages will be sent individually. Once again, thank you for all the support. And let's get straight into this video. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I know you guys just saw a little bit of an ad. I hope you guys uh, check out and get those free micro SD cards. I would really appreciate it. Also, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So if you enjoyed today's video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. But I don't want to waste too much of your time. We got some Zelda news to talk about. Some actual news because Eiji Aonuma and Fujibayashi did an interview with a... Dutch News Network, uh, that Dutch News Network was called, well, I'm going to double check here, RTL News, and I have some translations and some choice quotes I took from that article. I'll show you the full article at the end here, but I actually just want to dive into this because they talk about some really interesting things, and I think we need to just hop right in. And this first one here in my uh, summary notes here, the last two Zeldas are very different. Old fans sometimes cry out that they would prefer a classic old-fashioned Zelda. Would you like to make that sometime? Remember, a lot of people really want old Zelda to come back. This is a, a hotly desired thing. And we've even talked about how, oh, maybe they'll drop a top-down, you know, side-scrolling or whatever Zelda, old-school Zelda, in between this and the next one. But maybe that's a pipe dream. Because Aonuma said the following, it's difficult to say anything about the future. That being said, thanks to previous Zelda games, a game like Tears of the Kingdom now exists. This game originated from the ideas we had in the past. We always try to create something that offers more than previous titles. In that respect, we really aren't concerned with our older games anymore. We prefer to look to the future. So, prefer to look to the future. What you're seeing here is A.G. Aonuma pointing out that, hey, you know what? We understand some fans like the older games. We're not really looking at those games anymore. We're not trying to make the old school traditional games anymore. And that really does put a damper on people that were maybe hoping for at least a top-down Zelda to possibly give us that old school formula again. Now, it doesn't mean we won't get remakes and remasters. We already know that. We've seen Nintendo do a number of those over the years. But it is quite fascinating that Aonuma is basically just dismissing the idea of even revisiting that old formula. He's like, hey... We don't look to, like, we don't go backwards. We only go forward. So, uh, you know what? Um, I'm to fans who are hoping for the old Zelda games to come back, that era seems to be at an end, at least according to Eiji Aonuma. 
Now we get to another question that I thought was quite interesting in this interview, talking about Elden Ring, and I think in particular just Nintendo's, you know, how influenced they are by other games. And it says the hit Elden Ring is said to have been inspired by Breath of the Wild. Was that game a source of inspiration for you last year? Which kind of weird because it sounds like Tears of the Kingdom was actually done before Elden Ring came out, so it couldn't possibly be a source for inspiration. But it's the additional comments that I like here. So Fujibayashi responds and says, Sorry, but we didn't really get a chance to play the game. Of course they did, because, again, Tears of the Kingdom was in development. Uh, we were too busy developing Tears of the Kingdom, so we couldn't really play the game. We would have heard about it. Even if we had time to play games, we wouldn't reuse ideas when we make a game. We come up with a general concept and come up with new ideas based on that. So he's saying, we don't really get inspired by other people's games anyways. Now... There is a follow-up to that that says that's quite interesting because with many games from other studios, designers often talk about their inspiration from other titles. Is Zelda being made in more of a bubble? Aonuma responds, Of course there are situations where you make something similar to an existing game, but I would never try to put other people's ideas into my real game. I'm too proud of that. I always look for original ideas. When I made A Link Between Worlds, you had a 3D system that when you jumped where it looked like Link was coming at you, and he's probably talking about in addition to the stereoscopic 3D effect they had. When I showed this to then-President Iwata, he said he didn't know this was possible. I was really, really happy to hear that because to me, that's the core of game development, figuring out things that no one else has thought of. Now, there are some other things in this interview as well. You can see here as we uh, open up this interview um, over here in RTL News. Uh, there, 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 there's a lot more stuff in here, but of course, we're not going to sit here and read through the whole interview. There wasn't, to me, a lot of other extremely interesting stuff to go through, but we will link to the full interview down below because I'm not going to link it to my notes. <laughs> that being said, uh, one thing to remember when dealing uh, with this is that the Zelda team, you know, is in this flow where not only do I completely trust them because I love Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but I do think for old school Zelda fans that literally hate Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are just waiting for them to move on and go back to traditional Zelda games. It's very clear that's not going to happen. And I do find it fascinating that Nintendo doesn't really take a lot of inspiration from other games. They like to be the game that inspires others. You, you can just tell by him talking about how they just want to come up with original ideas and do things that have never been done of or thought of before. And you can really see that throughout their game design. So while you, you know, people looked at Breath of the Wild and said, oh, other games have crafting systems. Other games have you know hunting and gathering. Other games have cooking. Yeah, but they didn't really look at those other games when coming up with these concepts, and that is why Nintendo's feels just a little bit different, because they weren't basing it on other people's previous systems and other games. Now, it's interesting because we've heard things like, you know, Al Numa in the past saying, oh, he played, you know, like Red Dead Redemption and stuff like that, and people thought maybe that that added inspiration to the games, but apparently for A.G. Al Numa, he just says, no, nah, not really, man. Like, even when we get to play other games, we don't really, you know, like to bring those ideas into ours. Now, obviously, we all know there's like a subconscious thing that can happen as, you know, human beings and developers where if you play something, you might subconsciously be influenced by things that you've played because we all have our biases. So I'm sure subconsciously there are some sort of influences that come in from their uh, gaming experiences outside of Zelda. But, you know, I, I do like that response. And I just think in general uh, that Zelda's in a good place. And if you really loved Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, you probably couldn't be happier to hear that they aren't going to go back to the old ways. They're going to continue to move forward. They're not looking back. And if you were hoping that they would maybe try to mix the new with the old, I mean, remakes and remasters, that's... That's what you have to look forward to, it sounds like. I don't even know if we're going to get a top-down Zelda again. Like, when he says we're not going back, making top-down Zelda games is going backwards. Uh, and I, I, I just think they're not doing that. So I think, at this point, we can just expect a new Zelda game every five to six years, and it's going to be a really massive, big event game. And in between, they're going to give us a bunch of spinoffs and a bunch of remakes and remasters. And that's the way it's going to be for a long time. And... I'm cool with that world, but I'm curious if you are as well. Now that they basically confirmed in their own way that that's what the future is. 
Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next video.